Welcome back to The Breakfast. More of these conversations coming your way this morning on Applause TV Africa. We're now moving into talking um, an issue very closely related to security. The Nigerian Senate, of course, a few days ago, uh, gave a warning to the ICC and Amnesty International asking them to leave the Nigerian military alone. Uh, the Amnesty International, a few, you know, not long ago, also put out a, a report detailing human rights abuses and uh, numerous um, civil um, abuses against the Nigerian military and the Boko Haram sect. The, and, uh, the, the interesting thing about this is not—it's not just the Senate that's speaking. The army has also come up to yes, say that it's demoralizing counter, for yes. the officials and yes. all of that. But we're focusing on the call uh, by the Senate, even though um, we must put on record that um, uh, Senator Ndume uh, said they've not formally taken a position in the House, but he will be putting a motion to the House to make it formal, yeah. uh, cautioning these people so to we, not take... We would be, of course, having that conversation next and trying to understand how the military, you know, sees these statements and these uh, reports as demoralizing uh, to uh, its soldiers. So we've invited this morning Mr. Katch or Nonuju. Uh, and uh, Barrister Josephine Ijekume, thank you so much for your time this morning. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for inviting us. Inviting me. All right. I'm going to start with um, Mr. Anonuju. One of the statements that uh, Ali Ndume made said, uh, I'll start with this. It says, you cannot cry more than the bereaved. Um, and he, of course, is referring to the ICC and Amnesty International. Um, Mr. Anonuju, do you agree or do you think that you know, um, that's what they might be doing, crying more than the bereaved? No, 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 no. Uh, what the International Criminal Court is actually saying reflects the truth about the position of the generality of the Nigerian population. Uh, Ali Ndume is speaking for himself and he's not talking for the Nigerian people. The Nigerian people are not happy about the killing. They are not happy about the ways of the army. And let me actually tell you something. The worst about it is that the army seems to be in connivance with these people who kill Nigerians. Look at the Northwest, for instance. We have won and we have known that the affiliates of the Boko Haram, which is the Fulani bandits, have been ravaging the states of uh, uh, Katsina, Zampara, and Sokoto for a very long time. And in all that, the army has stayed hand. And now, as a strategy for the army, for, for money to be given to the Boko Haram, they have organized a kidnap. And what will happen? Money will... Okay, I think the network has uh, intervened here. I will get back to um, uh, Mr. Nonuju in a bit. Let's bring in uh, Josephine Ijekume. Uh, could you speak to us uh, your uh, perspective on the fact that the army has said it is demoralizing? The Senate is saying, leave us alone. Does it imply that the allegations are um, not, uh, not well intended or that they are untrue? Oh, okay. Um, first of all, I'll, I'll say that Senator Ali Ngume is not speaking for Nigerians. He said on behalf of himself and his colleagues, it's unfortunate that in this day and age, our elected representatives are not representing us. Rather, they are representing their political interests and their tribal interests. It is a shame, it is a shame and disgraceful. Secondly, Nigerian army, they say that they are demoralized. We, the people of Nigeria, we are demoralized by the brutality. Evident on, on social media, on all platforms of how Nigerian armies abuse people's fundamental rights, strip people naked on the streets, whip people. They say we have a few of them cutting off the necks of. Uh, insurgents and putting their bodies in ditches. They even went as far as appearing before a judicial uh, panel and they, they were claiming that uh, they shot blanks at civilian population. Is that the responsibility of the Nigerian army? Are they supposed to go on the, on Nigerian soil and open fire 
blank or otherwise on it, on that decision. Uh, like, let me let me ask you, Barista. Do you do you feel yes. that um, Dume says he's speaking for the Senate, uh, but that there is no formal resolution on that? He will make sure that happens. Do you believe that the Nigerian Senate is going to toe the same line and uh, caution the international community to mind their business? In Nigerian Senate should just should just not tell anybody to mind their business. First of all, Nigeria is a signatory to the Rome Convention. As of 2001 or thereabouts, that Nigeria ratified it. So, so what are they saying that uh, the international community should keep short? If ICT is carrying out its mandate, although I may, I may look at it from the basis of the fact that Nigeria being a member state of the ICC did not report these human rights abuses or the uh, the standard display of rule of law by the Nigerian security forces and Boko Haram forces to the ICC. But the ICC uh, prosecutor is empowered by the law guiding the ICC to, on her own motion, carry out this investigation. And she has carried out a preliminary investigation and found that, indeed, there has been fragrant abuse of human rights, torture, and women in the body treatment. Hello? All right. Uh, uh, hold on. We're um, with you. Just hold on a bit. Mm -hmm. population. Again, the civilian population. Okay. All right. Hold on. Hold on. Um, Barrister uh, Josephine, um, but I, you also permit me to quickly chip in. The video you mentioned about throats being slit by the army, th that's still an unverified video. We have not, you know, had any investigation to prove that they actually are um, soldiers of the Nigerian um, uh, military doing that. So just permit me to chip that in. I'm going to go back to uh, Mr. Ononuju, if you can um, hear us clearly now. I, I want your thoughts on, yes, on um, the Nigerian government. Do you think that they may be in any way have done enough to counter the narratives that Amnesty International has shared with the public and the ICC? Do you think the Nigerian government has taken it up upon themselves to prove that these accusations of human rights abuses are false? Well, uh, Nigerian government will not be able to counter the narrative because the accusations are true. Both the book, what the ICC said about Boko Haram and its treatment of Nigerians is true. What it also said about the Nigerian military and its treatment of those that they cast is also true. And what I was saying before you cut me off the other time is that there are far more offenses that the Nigerian army is committing that it's not yet been charged for. Mr. Ndube is only speaking for himself. They run to him to talk. The Nigerian army does not behave like the Nigerian army. It's not there to protect the people. It's not there to actually end these hostilities. So I really do not believe that we should stop at what we have had so far. What I'm trying to tell you is I also believe that the ICC should investigate the accusation by General Danjuma that the Nigerian army is in collusion with those who have been killing Nigerians across. Never mind the Boko Haram, because I believe the Boko Haram, the Fulani Headsmen Militia, and the Fulani uh, uh, Bandit Militia are all controlled from the same table. And uh, yeah. I believe that the Nigerian government is not telling Nigerians the truth Mr. Nanuju, let me let me let me interject and ask you this question. I'm, I'm going to read an um, an excerpt from Ndume's uh, statement um, to the press. He said, "If there are human rights abuses, um, it is only when the f there is a failure in uh, on the part of the three arms of government to act swiftly." and that we can draw attention of the international community to it. He went on to say, there was a kind of confusion that led to the isolated cases of human rights abuses, and that the Nigerian army has caught marshaled those officers, and that they have been um, punished. Now, my question is, it seems our response to criticism doesn't always toe the line of, maybe we should investigate. What would be the proper response by the Nigerian government to not just one source, but multiple sources that say this is what is happening. Is the action of court marshalling enough? Should more be done? Yes. 
the Nigerian government and the army are very used to telling lies. They believe when they lie about issues, citizens should just take it that way. No, it's not true. Look at the recent happenings that occurred in Lagos where the army was caught on camera and there were time camps on the shootings of civilians. What did at the army say? They are trying to deny it. When the evidence came out, they said, yes, we were there, but we did not shoot. When the evidence of shooting came out, they said, yes, we shot, but we did not shoot live bullets. When the evidence of live bullets came out, they said, yes, uh, they were live bullets that uh, we shot in the air. It's not true. The Nigerian army is not known to be honest in its dealings. And as I say, the Nigerian army has repeatedly stayed home while these terrorists kill Nigerians. So that makes a lot of Nigerians to suspect, as General Dajima did allege, that they are all in collusion. So we really do not see this as an army of Nigeria. No, it is an army that seems to do the interest, the ethnic interest of what President Buhari does. Now take a look for it, instance. The chief of army staff comes from COF 26, 27, 26. And yes, COF 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 34, 35, but of all of the army. And the man is still there. Why are you keeping a man that has failed? It is when somebody passes that you promote him. All right. Why keep a man who has failed? Why? Because we believe okay, that hold on, sir. Guy is kept there to stay out so that Fulani bandits can still run. Kindly and hold on, uh, I... Mr. Ononoju. Um, I, I understand, you know, he's very, very passionate about it, uh, this conversation, and we truly appreciate uh, the passion that you're putting into it. I, I, I want to quickly, because of time, I want to quickly also bring in Josephine uh, Ijehume. Um, there is, not long ago, of course, we heard about Australian soldiers who um, are, have been charged with uh, war crimes for their actions in Afghanistan between 20, 2009 and 2013. And a couple of them have been dismissed um, and, of course, may, would be charged um, for these crimes. Um, you, you would, of course, I, I maybe expect that the Nigerian government should do the same um, and see what investigations need to be done and all of that. But, but let me ask you, we are faced with an insurgency. We are faced with a, a very, very huge task of making Nigeria entirely safe again. In the midst of all the pressure that the Nigerian government is under to ensure that the bandits and the Boko Haram and ISWAP and which of them are all wiped out. Do you think there is some space or would you say that there still should be some space to observe the rules of engagement uh, with dealing with the insurgency? Um, I would say that uh, the Nigerian government has not actually uh, shown its seriousness in dealing with insurgency. Why am I saying this? The Boko Haram uh, group has not been, has not been uh, uh, labeled or identified as a terrorist organization by the, by, the, by the federal government. A lot of times, when the members of Boko Haram are captured, they are hampered. And um, this encourages people to think that it's so easy for them to get away with these horrific crimes. Having said, said that, the Nigerian government does not have any room right now. Because Nigerian people are in pain. The insurgency, the banditry, the kidnapping, and the clashes between headsmen and, and uh, farmers and all that, it is they, 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 want, they, they want to take up this job of, of, uh, of managing this country. I don't want to have an employee that I've given the mandate to run my business, and then my business is not there's no profit, my customers are running away. Uh, and rats and my document, I mean, everything is damaged. And then my employee will say, Please give me a breathing space. I have so much pain on my hands. I don't think I have space to, to do things right. Until Nigeria enjoys harmony. You, the issue you need in, in, in its instance, the government should not have any breathing space because that is what they signed up for. They say they could manage it enterprise for Nigeria. 
And the other colleague has actually mentioned that people that have failed in their business, in, in their responsibility, are still holding on to this position. Why? Why? Is this because of ethnic sentiment? How can somebody who has repeated me failed under its mandate, its, 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 its officers have flouted international law, degraded the rights of human beings, of the citizens they are, they are sworn to protect? All right. Um, let me and let me interject. So, so, sorry to interrupt you. No. So um, sorry to interrupt uh, so abruptly. Uh, we um, are time pressed. I want to take this particular question. Uh, I'll take it to you, Mr. Onanju. Um, there is something that Ndume said. Um, I mean, on the flip side of the conversation, he is putting out an accusation. Um, he's saying that uh, Amnesty International and others um, have not uh, given. Nigeria the support that they need to fight insurgency. In your thinking, how true is this assertion? And is it enough reason uh, to, you know, disparage whatever contribution they may be bringing to the table? Uh, uh, Dume is not sincere. He knows very well that the war is in Mopti, in Mali, it's there in Senegal is also here in Nigeria. All these wars are the Fulanese Basso, the different, different, different people of West Africa, and it's so primarily about land. Don't forget, when the federal, the Buhari administration begged us for land, for grazing reserve, we said no. They said for car colony, we said no. They said for uh, uh, Ruga, we said no. He said he wants to consolidate waters and land, we said no. And then they are employing these militia men to try to grab land. Who is it that wants land? President Buhari. So don't think about international help. No. President Buhari is not sincere about why the wars are on. About why he has gotten the army to stay hand. We need to address these issues. It's not about international. It's about the government itself using militia men to try to seize land by force. And when that doesn't come, this is what you have. Now right. they want Those money. Statements. So they kidnap children. And what will happen? Money will be given to them by the government. This is just a strategy. We are no more fools, I think. People are being forced now to raise their own military. You see the Yoruba of Tamotekun. I had yesterday in the East, the African people have raised their own military. Most people in the North are raising their own militia. Why? The government is not there All right. to protect lives and property. Okay. Um, catch on, Nanaju. Um... Finally, um, Josephine Ijekume, in 30 seconds, I want your thoughts on, uh, in the absence of Amnesty International and the ICC, because from the conversations we're having this morning, it almost sounds like uh, the Nigerian government, you know, is not very interested in being, you know, questioned or in, in being, you know, put on the spotlight. Um, in the absence of these bodies, the ICC and Am Amnesty International, um, how else do you think that these... Um, revelations, you know, can be put out there for people. Is there any other ways that, uh, you know, the government can be held to account? Is the question meant for me? Yes, yes it is. It's a final I question. Think, 30 um, seconds, please. If you recall, recently, um, there was this um, controversy about the president being summoned to the National Assembly to give account for the security situation in Nigeria. And then we were told by the Attorney General, rightfully, that the president cannot be summoned. The president has an option to decide to attend or not at the National Assembly. So, so the National Assembly is at the focal point right now to play the role, the oversight role, to, ensure, to bring out all the issues of insecurities that, that we are experiencing in Nigeria right now. They, they can set up committees, set up public, public uh, panels, and then they can have power to, 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 to compare the appearance of a minister, example, for example, the minister of petroleum, to appear before him, to come and discuss these issues that are plaguing Nigerians. If uh, using or use of social media and then use of the investigation of the act or the report of Amnesty International, which I find very funny that the Senate, the Commission of will say that Amnesty International has not provided support. That is not their role. All their right. role is to investigate um, uh, the human rights and to bring justice, to create equal rights for everyone. 
All sure. right, um, Josephine Ijekume, thank you very much. Um, I wish we had more time, but thank you for what you did um, share with us this morning on the breakfast. Thank you for inviting me. And of course, uh, Mr. Kachan Onuju, always a pleasure to see and talk with you. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. It's our pleasure. Brilliant. I love his passion. Yes, um, he's... It's, it's, um, it's always a beauty to hear people, you know, speak with such passion about this country. I hope that um, uh, the people that need to listen are listening and they will do the needful and try to, let's not be cynical when criticism is given, especially one that is as important and as, you know, timely as the ones that is coming up. We should look for ways to have conversation around how can we investigate this. If mm. there is even a shred of truth in this, we owe it to the people. And, and it makes you also, I mean, when you hear from Senator Ali Ndume, you then start to wonder who really speaks for the Nigerian people, who, who is really there to represent the Nigerian people and defend the Nigerian people, who? Um, you know, when Nigerian, you know, the public, you know, puts out information or complains, they say, oh, you know, we need to curtail the use of social media. Uh, the National Assembly itself, who should be representing the people, can't even get the president to answer questions. You know, he refused to show up at the National Assembly uh, to speak on security. So who then really is speaking for the Nigerian people? Wow. And of course, when Am Amnesty International does their own report, uh, the Nigerian government counters it. So I, I, it's, it's, it's a wild, wild, wild situation. <laughs>